hello guys so in last lecture we have seen that uh, MME has received the create session response uh, from SGW and MME has received a TID which is known as S1 SGW TEID okay so this is stored at MME okay so now MME will send attach accept message to UE okay this is attach accept message and let me tell you first the content of this attach accept it will contain the GUTI that is a temporary ID for uh, UE UE IP okay and it will also share the TAI list the TAI list is uh, created by MME for that UE where I mean in this tracking area UE can move uh, without any tracking area update okay along with TAI EPS beer ID will be there EPS beer id will be there apn will be there okay and uh, quality of service will be there okay so these things will be uh, the parameter of this attach accept message now as i have already told you that ue and mme cannot talk directly okay so this message will be sent to UE via e node b okay so first it will send a message we call it icsr that is your initial context setup request okay so this message this attach accept messages embedded in this ICSR message okay and e node b will forward this attach accept message to UE in RRC connection reconfiguration message okay so this is also sent via this so attach accept will be embedded in ICSR uh, to forward the attach accept to e node b and again this attach accept will be embedded to RRC connection reconfiguration message so that this attach accept could reach to UE okay uh, let's come to the parameters of these messages okay so so this will carry the security related parameter security algorithms you can say okay and it also carries the ERAB quality of services these parameters are determined by uh, MME ERAB, you know, ERAB is the radio access bearer uh, between UE and SGW. So, quality of services of that ERAB will be there. And the most important thing, this S1 SGW TID. S1 SGW TID okay so sgw share this tid to mme and mme share this uh, tid to e node b so now e node b has received the tid of sgw okay so what e node b will do e node b will draw a bearer towards sgw okay you can call it s1 bearer again this is a user plane okay and these the messages sh 
shown by red color are single link bird okay now the content of uh, reconfiguration uh, message will be your uh, eps bearer id eps bearer id and your drb id okay that is data radio bearer id after getting data radio bearer id the drb will be established guys this is radio part that is radio uh, that is uh, interface between ue and e node b so uh, so tids uh, doesn't work here we use drbs here okay so both uplink and downlink drbs are shared here so drb that is data radio bearer is established here this is d r b okay and one more thing uh, before rsc connection reconfiguration this a security also takes place okay that is access stratum security also takes place this we are not covering here okay if you want i can make a separate lecture on this topic as well okay so <clears throat> rsc connection reconfiguration drb has been established now next is now next is your uh, UE will send the attach complete message to MME means it's telling MME that attach complete has been done so attach complete again this is a NAS message okay so it will be embedded in radio and S1 interface okay the radio message is known as uplink information transfer that is UL information transfer and on S1 interface it is embedded in uplink transport uplink transport so it's uplink NAS transport message okay so attached complete is first embedded in this message and then it is embedded to this uplink NAS transport message so that it can reach to MME so next thing is that that uh, now uh, this as one thing I have missed that after this RSC connection reconfiguration message let me number let me put the numbers over there that this is the first message okay and then this is the second message this is the third okay and after RSC connection reconfiguration will send the initial context setup response message as well initial context setup response actually this message carries a very important parameter let me tell you so <clears throat> TID from E node B towards SGW has been created but from SGW towards E node B has not been initiated okay so what uh, means E node B will do E node B will generate S1 E node B TID okay so here E node B will generate the S1 E node B TID and it will share it to MME okay that is S1 in OB TE ID so this is the third message we have studied and this is the fourth one okay this is the fourth one this is the attach complete is fifth one this is sixth this is seventh I am putting the number so that it will be easy for you to uh, to check the sequence okay this is the fourth one okay so 
now mme got the tid of tid created by e node b now uh, what mme will do mme will send the message modify bearer request modify bearer request this message we have also seen in x2 handover okay you can check my those tutorials as well so in this modify bearer uh, request message mme will share the s1 e node b t id to sgw okay and it will send the response that is this is the modify bearer response i'm just putting mb resp because it's modify bearer response from sgw to mme now sgw has received the tid of e node b so sgw will create a bearer towards e node b okay so this is a s1 bearer towards as towards e node b so now you can see this s1 bearer is two way bearer that both sgw and uh, e node b can share ip packets with each other so guys uh, we have seen that pg with pgw the s5 bearer has already been established okay and last lecture i have shown you this thing that is s5 bearer and in this lecture s1 bearer and this drb are established so you can see that our default bearer which is made up of drb plus s1 bearer plus s5 bearer s5 bearer has been established these bearers constitutes eps default bearer rest of the things are signaling and these three are user plane okay okay guys so i hope you uh, get the concept how default bearer is established in ld architecture okay so if you have any question then uh, you can comment and please subscribe my channel okay thank you and one more thing uh, i'll make uh, on other lectures also like uh, drx and system information these things i'll cover in upcoming lectures okay thank you